Hi, I am Zumikito and this is a response to popular I am a Wargamer trend, for which Gemstrap TV nominated me. You will learn a bit about how I got into Wargaming, why I started this YouTube channel, what are my plans with it, and also I will get into advice for people that want to start their own hobby channel so you guys can succeed. Now, just before the video begins, I can see that just fraction of my viewers are subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe, it's free, and you can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. Alright, so don't skip any part of this video or it is not gonna make sense in the end. I'm gonna start with my story on how I got into Wargaming and then talk about my YouTube and YouTube in general and it will all fit together. And believe me, I have a lot to say on starting a YouTube channel. So, how did I get into Wargaming? It wasn't as simple as going around Games Workshop store and seeing some cool miniatures. You see, when I was 11 or so, I was looking for a way to find human contact and to socialize, since I was quite fat and I was not a very popular kid in my school. Actually, quite the opposite. First, I started playing Pokemon cards and I have to say that I love and enjoy Pokemon franchise to this day. But many years later, I moved on from Pokemon to my first skirmish miniature game, which was Star Wars Miniatures from Wizards. Star Wars Miniatures were quite good. I really liked the gameplay and of course I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but sometimes later this game was discontinued, unfortunately. Either way, before that actually happened, one day when I was at the gaming store, I have seen Games Workshop catalog on the counter. The quality of the miniatures that were in the catalog was amazing. Or at least I liked it, even though it cannot compare to the miniatures that are being produced right now. Back then it was start of the 5th edition. I also really liked the idea of getting high quality miniatures and knowing exactly what I get when I buy any product. With Pokemon card booster packs or Star Wars miniature booster packs, this was not the case. When you open any booster pack, you are sort of hoping for certain cards to appear so you can play them and use them in your deck. But with Warhammer, you know exactly what you get. So quite obviously, I got my first Battle Force box with Dark Angels, Ravenwing, Bikers and started. Over the years, Warhammer became the hobby on which I spent the most money and I have to say that I don't regret spending it. Basically, every part-time job that I had from that point on was mostly so I can afford Warhammer. Which makes me sound like an addict, but... It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> there was just one thing that was bothering me in this hobby. I was not winning. Unfortunately, I was not that good of a player and with the meta changing all the time, I was not able to win tournaments since I was not interested in changing armies all the time. Now, since I consider myself to be a person that likes challenges and competitions, I was keen on winning at least something. And if it was not winning at playing the game, maybe I could win at painting my plastic dudes. There is a tournament in my country where they also judge the paint job of your army. Initially, I could not get an award at first, but as I went on and painted more armies with different color schemes, putting more and more effort into each one of them, I was able to finally pull off a victory. And let me say that it felt amazing. I mean, when your army gets picked as the nicest one out of like 50 people, you can definitely tell yourself that all that time you invested into painting it was worth it. From that point on, I was mostly focusing on painting miniatures instead of getting and playing top tier armies. To segue into the second question of I am a Wargamer challenge, or trend, or whatever that is, over the years, not only did I get better at painting miniatures, but I also tried working in multiple jobs and even tried to start multiple businesses. Well, all of those jobs and businesses either did not receive too much of a success, or simply the passion that I had when I started them was not there anymore. So naturally, I had an idea to start a business in something I love. Painting miniatures. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you want to make a living in Wargaming, what choices do you have? An obvious one is to start a gaming club slash gaming store, but that demands capital and is quite risky. Even if I would consider that, in my country, the Czech Republic that is, the market for Wargaming is not that huge. I mean, it's getting better and better, but still it is not at the level of US, UK, Germany or even Poland. Another choice that you might have is to start commission painting, so painting for money. I am not gonna go too deep into this topic since I have a separate video on that, but basically I do not like the idea of changing my time for money and painting what I don't want to and not even keep it afterwards. It is definitely a way, but not for me. Also, if you want to scale up this business, you have to hire more people, which is not necessarily bad, but can be troublesome. The last thing that is worth considering in my opinion is creating content. Obviously, this doesn't mean that you have to create videos, you can certainly post on other social media and then monetize your content via Patreon or something like that, but for me, YouTube made the most sense. 
So to answer the second question of I am a Wargamer challenge, which is where do I see my channel going? I want to see my YouTube channel grow enough so I can make enough money to make it full-time career. I know, I know, it might sound really dumb, but trust me, I have thought about this for quite some time. At this point, I can also connect this to the last question, which is, do I have any advice for new Wargaming YouTubers? Okay, now listen and listen closely, because what I am going to say from now on is really important if you want to start. If you are sharing content on the internet, your goal at the end of the day is to have as many people view it as possible. Now, if you just want to document stuff for yourself and see where did the hobby take you as you went on, so you can look back one day and tell yourself, wow, I improved so much, that is great. Yes, that is also possible. But generally speaking, you want to bring as much value to as many people as you can. Or at least that is how I see it when I post something online. Of course, there can be some stuff that will not get shared a lot, but the same still applies. You generally want to bring people value from the content you share. That is also one of the reasons why I make my videos in English. I, I mean, I could make them in Czech, but that would also mean that hardly anyone would watch them and that I could not create as much value for as many people. And at the end of the day, that also means less money for me, which is bad news if I want to make a living by doing something that I love. So can you make a living by creating content as a Wargaming YouTuber? Well, the answer is maybe. Some people would say that Wargaming is such a niche hobby that there is no market potential. While the market is not huge as it is for gaming or beauty or fitness or whatever, there are still big time YouTubers and I am sure that they make quite nice income. Look at Miniac or Squidmar or Goober Town Hobbies or Midway. You know what, I'm sure that I'm gonna forget some YouTubers and people will get upset, but you get the idea. The market may not be that huge and the hobby is quite niche, but that is actually a good thing. You see, if I started vlogging about my personal life as a student in college in Czech Republic, what kind of person would be interested in that? I mean, really, think about it. Even if you started vlogging, is every single day of your life so interesting and so extraordinary that you would be able to lure in general audience? I know that it is not in my case. For that reason, you have to niche down. Starting a Wargaming YouTube channel is perfect for that. You know the stuff, there is much to talk about, and you know exactly who is your average viewer. Everything is well defined, and you also have multiple platforms where you can share your content. There are multiple Facebook groups for Wargaming, there are multiple subreddits, forums, and much more. So the argument that this industry is too niche is in my opinion not a good case against starting Wargaming YouTube channel. I would even say that there is quite the potential to make it full-time for many people. It is just a matter of what are you willing to invest and sacrifice. As I already mentioned, I am still at college. I do not have any mortgage, no kids, and even if for some reason I won't be able to run my channel in the future, I don't risk too much. But even so, I am investing my time into this channel and that is what I am risking here. Time wasted. Let's look at my situation real quick. I work as a contractor for fintech startup, I am a college student, I work out 4-5 to five times a week, and I have a girlfriend. Out of these, I definitely have to spend my time on college and my girlfriend. The rest, including YouTube, is up to me how I manage. Are you willing to give up on going to the gym so you can pull out that video? Are you willing to sacrifice your other hobbies for more content? These are the questions that you have to consider. If you are currently working full time somewhere, have a family and have a mortgage, starting a YouTube channel and quitting your job is definitely not the right move. Start slow, set a goal of let's say two videos a month and see how hard it is for you. Then adjust your expectations and act accordingly. Speaking of the content, this is something that you have to figure out for yourself. There are three major types of content you can consider as a wargamer. You can either make your content around miniatures themselves, that means converting, painting and stuff. There are quite many big time YouTubers that do just that. Or you can focus on battle reports. Example of channels that are centered around battle reports are play on tabletop, mini wargaming or tabletop tactics. And the last type of content that you can produce is some sort of commentary or deep dives into the lore. For me, it made sense to start a YouTube channel around painting. Whatever kind of style you pick for your channel, you have to keep in mind that people stop and watch your content for two reasons. You either educate them or entertain them. 
even if you consider something like this video. Maybe telling my story at the start was entertaining for some of you and for some of you it might bring you valuable information from which you can learn. Either way, if your viewer is not learning anything new or if he or she is not entertained, your content will not be of much use to them. Of course, combining education and entertainment would be your best bet. That is also the reason why YouTube works the way it works. And now, if you can, take some notes or save this video to some playlist because I have some hard information dropped for you right here. YouTube and all of the social media are designed so they keep the user on the platform for as long as possible. So your goal as a creator is to keep your viewer engaged. In other words, you have to make content that people will want to watch for as long as possible. It all comes down to three metrics, click-through rate, watch time and audience retention. YouTube also takes into consideration popular topics. That is why it is worthwhile creating a video about something that the rest of the creators are covering too. An example of this is Indomitus box set. In the past months I am sure that you have seen quite many videos on that and I have jumped on to this bandwagon too. Simply because YouTube knows that people who have watched a video about that topic, it will recommend that topic forward, since, you know, they already know that you as a viewer are interested in that. Anyway, to maximize click-through rate, which is the percentage of people that click on your video when they see your thumbnail on YouTube, you have to have a really good-looking thumbnail that grabs attention. I am not gonna talk about the characteristics of it, so you will have to make your own research on how to create good thumbnails. And let me say that there is a lot to learn. If your video fails to grab attention, even if you make top-notch content, ultimately it will not be seen by others. I would say that good thumbnails and good titles of the video will make 40 to 50% of the video success, but that is just my opinion. So do your own research, look at the homepage and consider which thumbnails stand out the most and act accordingly. You can even look at the thumbnails and titles of my most successful videos. Next, there is watch time and audience retention. Obviously, you want to have both as high as you can. Now you can choose a strategy to make really long videos so you get quite high watch time. But if you do that, you are also sort of sacrificing audience retention. So, for example, let's take this video where I painted my sister of battle. You can see that it has over one hour. What would you guess is the average watch time? Or for how long do you think do people watch that video on average? I give you a minute. Okay, stop the video and type your guess in the comment section now before I reveal the result. Three, two, one. Yes, it is quite low. Mind you, six to seven minutes is not bad at all for short videos. So in absolute numbers, it is great. But when you consider that it is just 10% of the video, it is not that great. For that reason, it might be in your interest to not make your videos as long as you can, but rather to make them as short as you can and put in as much information and as much value as you can. So I would highly recommend doing your own research on how to build your YouTube channel. Great channels that I can recommend for that are video creators, Catherine Manning and Paddy Galloway. There are surely more, but these are which I like. I have also purchased the 30 days to a better YouTube channel from video creators and I have to say that it is a worthwhile investment. But as you do your research, keep in mind that you have to also keep creating. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you do not create, you are not giving yourself a chance to improve. I mean, go ahead and watch some of my first five videos. If you do or did, those are some really bad videos. But as I went on and learned to edit better, got better gear and saw what works and what doesn't, I improved quite a bit. I mean, just look, right now as I am making this video, I have around 4,200 subscribers, which is not that much, but just a year ago, I had 218 subscribers. And if you want to hear something even more shocking, it took me one year and two months to get 1000 subscribers. And to get additional 3000 subscribers, it took me just seven months. So not only that there is a snowball effect as you make more content and you have better reach, but you also get better at making videos. And finally, let's talk about what you need. If you are doing lore deep dives, I imagine that you don't need much, just quality microphone. I do not know about what you need when doing battle reports, but I can tell you what I was using when I started and what I'm using now. And let me be clear, if you have an iPhone with a really good camera and some good light, you are mostly set. 
I have started with these cameras that are not that great, but served me well for some videos. I imagine that I will be still using them to get more angles or to cover my wet palette. Since then I got some money to afford X-T20 Fuji camera, which I have to say is amazing. Unfortunately for many videos I have not used manual focus but autofocus, so sharpness on some footage is all over the place. Taking a good shot of your miniature is a topic by itself, but I don't think that I am going to cover it right now, but I would recommend using manual focus and getting either a tripod or some rig. I have made a custom solution from microphone arm which I attach to a shelf, so I can get some nice overhead footage. You also need some good mic. Either get lavalier mic like this one, which will serve you well for multiple shots and you can record just on your mobile device, or you can upgrade to this one which has this really good flexible arm and great sound. In fact, what you are hearing right now is recorded on it. Regarding the light, I am using this one when painting and it's fantastic. Actually, in all of my videos when I am painting miniatures, I am using this exact lamp. These are the specs and just keep in mind that you want really cold light, not some yellow hot garbage. So to sum it up, you need good camera, good light, good mic and you can add more as you go along the way. But there is one last thing that I have to mention and that is editing software. I have started using Filmora Wondershare which is super easy to use but if I could go back in time I would start in Premiere Pro right away. I have made a transition to Premiere Pro recently and I have to say that it is total time saver and has many more features that will make your video potentially way better. So if you want to take it easy from the start, try out Filmora, but transitioning to Premiere Pro is way better in the long run. Now these softwares are not free, but if you can get your hands on them, they are great. Once again, if you want something different, do your own research. All right, so to answer the last question, which is what advice would you give to starting Wargaming YouTubers? Just do it. Start making content with what you have, you will learn, you will grow, but to start is the most important step. Also do your own research, take notes and look at the content that other creators make. I mean, look at this video and my channel. What am I doing to keep you watching? How did the thumbnail and the title of this video grab your attention? What are other YouTubers doing to get your attention and keep you watching? As you go and create more content and watch others, you will improve. Keep in mind that my channel totally sucked for the first year. And just lately I have seen some dynamic growth. So if you are working hard and smart and with enough patience, you can definitely make successful YouTube channel too. I'm sure that there will be more questions and I am more than happy to answer them in the comment section. To this day, I am trying to reply to every single comment that I receive. So if you do have a question, leave it there. Now also, I guess that I have to nominate someone for this challenge. So I nominate Doc from 2 Plus Tough YouTube channel, since he is able to just create so many videos on so many subjects and I find it quite fascinating. So hearing his answer would be interesting. I also nominate Ninjon because he has been hanging around the YouTube sphere for a while now and I wanna see his perspective. Lastly, I will nominate YouTube channel from my own country and that is Rohata Kostka. Since that is mainly our local podcast, he can modify the questions so they will suit him. Also, thank you Jamstrap for nominating me. I have to say that I really enjoy the videos where you are working with the green stuff. Alright, so as always, if you find this content helpful, subscribe to this channel. Also, give this video a thumbs up so YouTube will know that it should take this video and recommend it to others. And see you in the next one. Bye!